I am for discipline. I am for clarity. I have invented the word la ville radieuse, which cannot be translated in English. He's usually quoted nearly everything that I have said, and not quite the way I said it. Um, yeah, I've sat down there for years, um, so it's a, yeah, it's a huge privilege and honour to be standing up here in reverse. Um, uh, I've listened to talks, good and great, and yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a privilege, to, and thank you for the invitation. Um, okay, we'll kick it off. I suppose I want to start by saying I didn't grow up dreaming of being an architect. Um, I chose architecture for a kind of... Um, the wrong reasons, if you like. Um, as you said, I'm from Galway, and you could not do architecture in Galway. That's why I chose it. Um, and, <laughs> it, you know, for me, it was a ticket out, and basically out of the West. <laughs> and that's nothing wrong with the West, but it was, it was um, chosen for the wrong reasons. Um, and I suppose I want to just share with you a story about um, how, I suppose, I got an understanding for what this thing that we do is called architecture. Um, and it's based around the story of a wardrobe. Um, so needless to say, if my beginnings were, you know, as a student, I wasn't a particularly good student. Um, I had kind of failed studio in third year and um, I took a year off and then took a further year off and basically um, ended up in Barcelona on a year off um, and was interested in this girl called Lola. This is not a joke, this is a true story. Um, um, and I was interested in her and she was very interested in architecture. Um, <laughs> and um, I met her one day and she was buzzing and she had got this new commission to design a wardrobe um, and uh, yeah I was interested in her and she was interested in this commission so and she was saying would I collaborate with her on this project and it was through this collaboration that my understanding for what this thing the penny dropped if you like and um, this project became a kind of an openness to the potential in things. Um, so the, it became a box of tricks. So things folded down to become benches, doors were mirrors to kind of give you a view around the corner, to throw light, to bounce light. Um, there was a, an iron, if pieces flipped down to be an ironing board. There deliberately isn't a drawing up there because one's imagination of it is just better. Um, so there was a trouser press and it was basically I suppose, about an openness. Yes, it had to be a storage box for clothes, but it also had to do, or there was a search for the more, it was a search for more and the potential for more. And so I'm gonna show some projects today that don't, might not always deliver on that, but they have an intent to basically find more. So beyond the box of clothes, the wardrobe, what else can you do? Um, this is a project that probably most, well, some of you will know. Um, it was the AI site visit um, six months ago at this stage. Um, and then it was in open house as well. So it basically, this is a house on Claremont Road in Holt. So we're the north of Holt Peninsula. Um, uh, so you can see the train lines actually running east-west right through the photo. Um, and then Claremont Road is the road just immediately north of that. And this is an amazing kind of part of Dublin that is kind of cut off. It's cut off by the train line um, and it's kind of seaside by the beach and these plots are amazing. They have kind of a front on the road and a front on the beach. And this particular plot is particularly amazing because it also has a lake. Um, so it's an acre site with eight tenths of an acre of a lake in the middle of it. Um, and then it has these amazing trees. Um, and yeah, I suppose uh, Susan, the client for this, came to us in 2011 and um, had bought this site. And there was a house on it which wasn't particularly great. It wasn't particularly well built. It was uh, it fallen apart and uh, there was an opportunity to possibly create a replacement house. Um, the beach is a protected kind of scenic community area, so you couldn't touch anything on the beach. Um, and the dunes of the beach actually came into the site. So they came in to the northern edge of the site. Um, and that, 
Yeah, so, so the, there's dunes basically. So this is the kind of the storage box of clothes, the basic stuff that you have to do. So it's about sun path and east to west and, you know, light and, and wind direction and so on. And then the geometries of the place, you know, the, the, the geometry of the house that was there. But what was of particular interest was the trees, let's say there's these amazing trees and the dunes um, to the north of the beach, which actually came into the site. And there was this amazing moment where there was a pedestrian access onto the um, beach directly for the client, uh, directly from the site. So, you, so she'd go for a, wa a walk first thing in the morning um, and last thing at night, and you could walk from the house um, or from the site directly onto the beach. Um, and the th key thing for her was that she wanted to kind of avail of this place um, and uh, I suppose, um, yeah, make the most, maximize the site. Um, there's a really nice um, tree here, cherry blossom, I think, I've forgotten, but. Um, that becomes part of the story as well. Um, and then there was some bad views. There's a block of flats across the way here and there was um, some overlooking left and right. And then there were some brilliant views, the yellow when you get up to a certain height, out over Dublin Bay and, and, and Ireland's Eye and uh, Lambay Island and Port Marnock and Malahide, um, which were clues, if you like. Um, so here's the lake edge, um, the tree uh, and the dunes that we couldn't touch that were protected. Um, and our, yeah, I suppose our strategy was to, um, we couldn't touch the lake, we couldn't touch the dunes. Uh, most of the site was water, there's trees, you know, and so we'd a, we'd a huge site with very little land. Um, and so um, I suppose this is about uh, a front entrance, a front door and a back door, if you like, directly opposite each other. The front door coming in from Claremont Road, the back door bringing you to the beach. Um, and then I suppose a sequence of we had this amazing moment, and um, I told us at the, at the um, site visit, we're at a pre-planning meeting, um, um, the Fingal engineer said, you cannot build habitable rooms. On, there's this Frem Fran study, Fingal flood risk management study, and you cannot build a habitable room on, the, on this site, even though there was a house there already, um, on, the, on the, you know, the, flo the ground level of this site. Um, and, um, yeah, there was this kind of moment of, well, that's the end of this project. Um, unless you look at it the other way around, and if you kind of said, well, okay, if, you, if, if we could, uh, at what level could you build um, then? And the, the, the engineer was saying, well, at four meters ordinary survey datum, you could um, have a habitable room. And we turned to the planner and said, yeah. And they said, yeah. And so before you know it, we had got up out of the dune, got up over the dunes and had this amazing panorama um, to those views of the previous slide. Um, so it's a super simple house. It's basically two floor plates on the right hand side, which are bedrooms. And at a half level removed from that, another floor plate, which is a living space, kitchen, eating, living space. Um, and there's the stairs between. And then there's a frame that basically holds it all together to enable us to hang out and get some space back. Um, so so um, we couldn't basically build on the lake, but we could hang out over it. And uh, we wanted some ground plane um, to get cars in and stuff and park cars, but we could hang out over that um, ground. So uh, that's it all as an assembly then. As the study model, the concave or the, the, the change in direction is about, well, it's about hanging out over the lake and I suppose the experience of that. But it's also about, um, I suppose, by changing geometry, you get, you point to the center and that's where the entrance is located, so it kind of says hello, it says welcome. And on the other side then, where it's kind of convex, you get this exaggerated panorama of, you know, 200 and something degrees <coughs> um, uh, to avail of those views off to Ireland's Eye and Lambay Island and so on. Um, the site plan then, showing that form where the, it splits geometry halfway through. Um, and that split in geometry, the entrance, um, and it's opposite the tree and opposite the dunes, it's the front door, it's the back door. There it is in the site then, with the dashed, or the, the line, you know, hanging out over the lake and hanging out over the carport. And then these are the plans. So it's super simple. It's the non-habitable, um, thank you very much, engineer stuff here on the left. Um, so this is kind of the engine room. You know, it's the carport and the boiler house and the jacks and the cloakroom. So you cannot, you know, that's non-habitable. And then you come up a half a flight. So now we're in the, you know, risk-free area or flood risk-free area. So um, 
and this is uh, a wing of bedrooms, you know, two bedrooms back to back with um, bathroom stuff between. And then you come up another half a flight and you're up here and you're basically into the kitchen, um, eating, living space and terrace um, for a sunset facing west. Um, and then an up another half a flight basically and you're into um, the other pair of bedrooms with the, with the um, bathroom stuff between. This is kind of a little pocket terrace so that she can have coffee in the morning. Um, and this is the evening terrace, uh, yeah. Um, and I suppose the, this knuckle bit is about, I suppose, the, the resolution of the two geometries and it's where all the circulation happens. You know, the... Um, it's, yeah, I suppose to do with the beach, it needed to be as low as possible so that we had, as, you know, as minimum impact as possible on the beach side, on the left-hand side, and then um, it's, it's, it's taller towards the, the lake side on the right. And that also works with the orientation so that it's taller um, uh, to the south side. And then pretty obvious, well, it's, it's taller in the living spaces because of that half of a story shift um, between the bedrooms and um, the living space. So this is it from the beach. Um, Mary Louise, I don't know if she's here. Um, thinks it looks like a caravan in Tremor. <laughs> um, and this is it. For, this is it then from the lakeside and um, the tree and the sorry in the evening. Um, you can see prob probably clearer the kind of the, the two wings of bedrooms on on the right hand side and then the more generous where it's needed in the living space. You know, so it's so it's more generous where it's more important. Sorry. And so then, yeah, this is kind of the approach to it then. Um, and the, the carport where we steal a bit of ground back. And the terrace above. And then we're into the, I suppose you come in the hall then and we're into the kind of the knuckle, the, the junction between, um, yeah, I suppose the bedrooms are on the right and the living space is on the left. And so we're at the junction of the house and uh, the front door and the back door, which are directly opposite each other. And so there's this really simple stairs that just goes up in half flights, so you get off and you're at the bedroom, or you get off and you're at the living space. Um, and that's it from above, and that's that little morning terrace. And then this is the, the roof geometry, so the, it's, it's, um, it's made up of steel frame and flitch beams, you know, timber and steel flats. Um, so this is the geometry of the two, um, or the collision of the two geometries. Um, so, and then we're in the living space. Work, okay. Um, yeah, I think it's important to say that this is not my work. This is the result of a huge amount of work um, and toil and um, hours, basically, of input from a pretty amazing bunch of people. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's right to acknowledge that. I think it's right to kind of, you know, um, and it probably goes back to my beginnings of, of choosing architecture in the first place. I'm quite okay with letting go of authorship. Um, and yeah, so the work that's been shown here and the work that will be shown um, as we go on is not of, you know, it's not of my hand necessarily. I, I, I'd be a firm um, believer in hiring good people, hiring people better than yourself. I think I got that at an AI lecture here. Um, um, and yeah, and letting them at it, getting out of their way and and basically, yeah, enabling their potential. Um, and what ha when you do that, an amazing thing happens that, that the kind of the whole sense of ownership um, changes. Um, that um, if you allow a young architect into the beginning or the creation of a project, they're, yeah, well, they own it. And then they will fight for it when it needs to be fought for. They will basically, you know, your, um, I suppose the the sense of engagement and the sense of ownership. See that previous project with Olivia, you know, she, she would give a right arm for that project. I know, and um, and as detailed it to its eyeballs, you know. So so, um, I think through loosening and being open to the potential of others, um, and the potential of one's team, um, amazing things can happen. Here they are. So um, I'm going to embarrass them all. <laughs> um, so basically, that's Elizabeth Burns, Dara, 
Burke and Fikra Marin, Jennifer Duffy, um, Ethel Dutleary, <laughs> they're going to kill me. <laughs> um, uh, Aideen Lowry, um, Olivia Saffer, Ashley Cleary, um, Gossia Meder Bowman, and, um, and Kira Reynolds. And um, just a point uh, to add to that, <laughs> the average age in the office is, is, is very young, I'd bring it up. Um, and, and an amazing thing, um, I think if, if, yeah, I think it's good to have, to kind of be open to the, um, to the positive, whatever you call it, it's enthusiasm or naivety or, or, or just basically energy of youth. And, and, and I think young is good. And I think our role as kind of architects or directors of architects' practices is to keep, keep them out of the ditches. Um, but back off and loose, you know, loosen the directorship so that it's, there's a sense, that sense of ownership is enabled and to be as loose, um, yeah, to be kind of an interested spectator as opposed to, um, you know, uh, yeah, to, to, I think to be looser in terms of enabling others. Young is good. Um, okay. This is a project in, in Feathered in Wexford um, on another amazing site on the coast, so, um, you know, on the right of France. Um, and, uh, yeah, basically, this is a headland bag and one head with a um, really nice beach. Um, and uh, a couple, um, Justin and Maureen, came to us quite a while back now uh, to do a house on the site. Um, is this working? It is. Um, and, and, yeah, so this is the site. Uh, cliffs, cliffs 20 odd metres away from the edge. Um, and it's a really simple house where we basically pointed it towards Hookhead. There's an amazing view to the left hand side um, of Hookhead, you know, the, the next headland over. Um, and this is a house that is just uh, about, it's a square, it's two, it's two, basically it's, it's a rectangle that intersects uh, with another rectangle and one is living spaces and the other is bedroom spaces. And that's it, it's so simple. And where they intersect, it's a square, and that's the engine room, that's the low stuff that is um, utility and you know, boiler and jacks and the like. Um, and uh, in the negative, in, in the, if you like, in the outside, it's a garden. And the form of the building shelters from the wind, the prevailing wind coming in off the sea. So um, the L is, if you like, a kind of um, an arm around this garden that's in the middle. We take three cuts out of it. Um, one is for the entrance uh, in the foreground. To the right, the biggest one is this terrace you'll see in a minute, and it's to do with um, looking at Hookhead and this amazing view. And then the third one is a cut out to do with um, enjoying the garden. Um, the client, um, one, of their, one of their requirements at the start was um, that they wanted to have a roof terrace that they could enjoy the view from. And we did loads of schemes and kind of left out the roof terrace on loads of occasions. And they just kept saying, but there's no roof terrace. You're not listening. Um, and uh, so this scheme is all about roof terrace. Um, and so what happens is in the square, the, the, if you like, the closest square to us um, here, I point to it, um, this guy, the ceiling height is basically 2.2. Here, the ceiling height is 3. And in the 800 mil difference, you get this terrace, which is hidden. Um, in the knuckle again of uh, the two wings. Um, so basically, here the hands then, um, super simple bed, uh, living space, um, interconnecting kitchen, eating, living space uh, with this terrace, this big terrace that faces the view. Um, and this is dual aspect into the garden. And then this is the entrance sequence, and this is all low and mean and kind of tight and low ceiling height. And there's this little secret stair here which brings you up to the terrace. Um, the roof terrace, and then there's three, four bedrooms, um, bang, 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 and then the big one at the end, and they have this, their services kind of in between. And then this is the cutout, which kind of enables a kind of a connection or a flow with the garden, which is sheltered from the wind. Uh, there's the roof plan, uh, super simple, uh, and this is the terrace, which is kind of concealed from the outside. Yeah, so the section probably explains the terrace idea best, which the low, um, lower ceiling heights and the stairs up. So, yeah, um, the dual aspect um, kitchen, the terrace, um, the bedrooms, um, and then the engine room with the low ceiling. 
and this is its uh, view towards Hookhead. And it's kind of a balance of trying to, you know, if you say to a client, we want to integrate this to, into the landscape, they go, you know, what about my view? And so it's trying to find a balance between being high to get a view and being low to integrate into the landscape, which is sort of a contradiction. Um, and then, yeah, this is the entrance sequence then. So the, in, the, in the, the, the cutout for the porch, and there's the bench um, to kind of take off your shoes. Um, and the three bedrooms facing north. Um, and then the cutout, I suppose, here for um, the terrace facing the sunsets and, and, and Hookhead. Um, and then this is the garden that's sheltered um, by the, the L shaped of, of the building and the cutout for um, you know, uh, that relationship uh, of the bedrooms, let's say. You've come through from the hall and you're in the kitchen um, with the three metre high ceiling heights and this is all dual aspect and faces south as well. Um, you look back and there's the cutout from the bedrooms um, and you look back towards the entrance sequence. So you're at the knuckle of the L and then this is the living space um, with the doors open to that terrace which faces Hookhead. This next project is um, about something more. It's about, um, it was kind of born out of a frustration that we would um, quite regularly have young couples that would come into to us um, that they had, uh, they had some land or they'd been gifted a site or um, basically they were enthusiastic about um, building a new house and we would be really interested in that going, yes, great, and uh, we would discuss fees and bang, you know, we'd never see them again, they'd be gone. Um, and yeah, it's, 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 it's like, we're ultra grateful for the projects, the clients that do come to us, but the reality is um, we are kind of irrelevant for most of the people that come to us, and there's something wrong with that. Um, so this is a project about um, trying to be more relevant, um, and it's, it is kind of, if you like, it's trying to be a kind of a low price um, offering to somebody. It's not trying to compete with other architects, it's trying to basically um, uh, engage with somebody who basically doesn't have the resources to retain an architect. Um, and so this is a kind of a pre-designed idea where basically uh, we take a, a, the cottage and, and, and take it up to um, speed, if you like, or, or to kind of, yeah, it's a contemporary cottage. Um, and it's kind of, uh, if you like, um, it's not trying to change the design world, it's trying to change the kind of non-design world, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, so, it's, so basically um, it's a cottage that could get easily through a planning process that could easily, you know, it's kind of, um, anyway, you'll see it as we go, but um, it's a bit of a time to on this. Um, so yeah, here's the plans, <coughs> and it's taken the form of a cottage. Uh, it, you know, it's a heavy north wall, it's um, entrance with a cutout, um, a porch that has a low ceiling height, <laughs> um, there's a, the engine room again, um, where it's a bit tighter, the cloakroom and the, you know, the utility and so on, um, and then the downstairs bedroom, um, and then the, you come in and you turn and there's uh, basically a living space that has an eating space off it and a kitchen. And it's quite tight, it's quite economical, um, it's 150 or 158 square meters this whole house it can be in this one which is three bed basically three bedrooms uh, or you can make it a four bed by having this as two kids bedrooms and um, so this is a three bed version and um, when you come upstairs basically it's generous over where it should be generous the living space um, and uh, so there's a stairs up and there's a bedroom basically either side and just before you go into the bedroom there's a little study um, and yeah, uh, so this is a model then basically uh, showing that from above with the roof off, the bedrooms either end and the void or the hole over the living space and the stairs and the slot to the north side. Um, and the idea is that it could work, it won't work for every site, but it would work for say most sites of kind of, you know, uh, a third of an acre upwards, upwards where, where basically, um, you know, in a rural situation where you need to have it at that scale anyway for sewage treatment and so on. So it could work for, um, you know, the typical site. Um, 
And so we kind of pre-designed it. There is no client here. Um, we pre-designed it so it could work in shingle in a kind of a suburban setting or in render, you know, with zinc, zinc roof um, in a, you know, maybe a beachside setting uh, or whatever, timber boarding or again, um, timber boarding and slate. So basically we offered it in a kind of a palette of different materials that could be, you know, customized to, so it's a, it's a standard house that can then be personalized to a potential client. Um, and here it is inside then, uh, so you're in the tall living space where there's a void above and, you know, there's one big opening on every elevation. So in front of you is um, face and west. Um, so the orientation of this would, would kind of be a constant um, and, and uh, yeah, sorry. Then um, looking back um, uh, towards the entrance, you come in and the stairs is kind of hidden behind in there. Um, that's the up to the stairs, fireplace, and a bit large opening to the south. Um, and then that's the, um, the void overhead and you're up on the upper floor um, looking back down. Um, and basically that's it. Okay, next project. Um, is in uh, Mount Anvil. So uh, off the N11, Fosters Avenue continues on to be Mount Anvil Road, which is that road. Um, and basically it is this uh, kind of perfect size again. East, west, uh, you know, 70 odd meters, fantastic trees. Um, and the, uh, Kevin, the owner of this, um, basically had a, he had a 1960s kind of rubbish house on the site and he came to us and he said it was dark and it was cold and he wanted a, a bright and a warm house and um, uh, we, we, and the house was kind of casting a shadow in its own garden and basically we, we nervously said well would you consider starting afresh and um, uh, he's, yeah, he, he was open to that and amazing guy went for it and obviously that was a kind of a whole step up in, in, in money terms, but um, he went for it and uh, um, this is the result. Um, so basically amazing trees, uh, oak trees, the, the, the name of the former house is Oak Lodge, so there's these fantastic trees and this house basically is about availing of the, the site that is there and the three kind of gardens that are made. There's a, a lovely garden, nothing to do with us, um, that's there uh, facing east uh, and again another one that's there facing west and we basically knocked the house that was there and pulled away as much as we could from the southern boundary. So that's the southern boundary. We got as far away as we could from it um, to kind of create this, uh, I suppose, third garden, which is a brick courtyard. Um, and then in, in, in um, yeah, well, sorry, I'll take it through the plans. So, so on the north side, a bit of a pattern here, all the, um, the low stuff, the mean stuff, the utility, boiler, jacks, um, the low bit of the kitchen, um, and in the, his case it was a guest bedroom, and the entrance. So basically that's all on the north side. And that's single story to stay away from the neighbour, so we didn't cast a shadow on the neighbour, um, a planning requirement. And then, and then the rest of it is about generosity and height. So this has a 2.4 high ceiling, and this has a 3 point something high ceiling, I can't remember, 3, three, high, three metres anyway. And, um, <coughs> This one is kitchen and it's about east into that big garden that's facing east. Uh, and, and this one then is kind of day to day. Um, where are we going? Yeah, this one is kind of day to day sitting room. And then this one is about kind of formal, good room, if you like, off the entrance, which is facing west. Um, and then these are all generous ceiling heights and the good ones get dual. So they get west and south. This guy gets east and south and then the good one gets out. Um, and then upstairs, it's super simple. It's three bedrooms, kind of basically bang, 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 um, and they're bookended by uh, bathrooms. And there's this um, gallery, which is roof lit, which lights the whole thing, which is kind of an internal room. A section probably explains it in terms of light best. So that's that internal gallery um, in the middle there going, um, so top lighting everything and then to the north side is the dark stuff and then the extra ceiling height um, uh, to those good rooms basically um, which open onto this kind of brick courtyard and the bedroom above. And then, you know, we didn't build on the north side on the first floor to kind of not annoy these people 
and we stayed as far away from um, the southern side to not avoid these people. And then they used the trees. Um, the model then of the three bedrooms, and then the good rooms with the dual aspect either end. So this is a view from the the good the entrance side of the good sitting room, um, the entrance on the left, um, the brick courtyard. Um, I suppose the middle, which is the middle garden that all the good rooms open onto, and then from the back. And then the, that dual aspect diagonal kind of living space. And the tall, um, top lit uh, entrance hall, I suppose. And then there's an assembly of how it all goes together. Just go back to that. The project architect on that was 25. Um, sorry, getting work. Yeah, um, so um, in 2010, um, we did 28 um, fee proposals. 28, uh, where 28 scenarios where we went, went and met with people, you know, did an interview um, uh, and basically bid for a job and got, out of 28, we got none. Um, and that was, well, it was a sign of the times. Um, it was a sign of the times, but it was also, like every practice, you know, we were decimated. Um, but it was also, um, I think it was a kind of a symptom of kind of Celtic tiger and fat, if that makes sense. Um, that we were kind of, get it, pr prior to that, we had been kind of getting work in spite of ourselves. Um, and, and what I mean by that is, you know, a good interview back then for me was, um, you, know, uh, you know, we're fantastic, you should hire us, you'd be crazy not to hire us, here's my portfolio, and we're amazing. Um, and I suppose there's kind of been an understanding, I suppose there's been an awakening since that, um, like a good interview now is, is, is completely not about the practice, it's about the person you're talking, you know, it's, I suppose the point I'm trying to make is we work a lot harder now at getting work and minding work. Um, I suppose in 2010, we went back to those 28 people um, and we asked as many of them as we could, you know, what was it about us that basically we didn't get the job? You know, what was the reason why we didn't get the job? And some of that was amazing, you know, and it's kind of scary. Um, uh, some of it was like one of the I was asked at an interview, well, you know, if you got this job, how would you, um, what would your thoughts on this particular design issue be? And my ad I said, and this was quoted back to me, I said, well, hire me and I will tell you. And, you know, surprise, surprise, we didn't get the job. Um, and like, uh, um, so, so I suppose there's a, um, I suppose, a client's biggest fear is they're gonna hire this creative artistic architect who's gonna go off and do an amazing scheme that they didn't want, you know, and, um, and waste their time and their money doing something that's not what they asked for. So we, we work so much harder now at basically, um, if you like, uh, getting into their head at the start so that we understand um, what it is they're, and I suppose asking why and why and what it is they're actually trying to do. Um, and an amazing thing happens then because if, if you can communicate or if you can get a client to basically trust that you understand what they're trying to do, not only will they give you the job, but they'll let you do it. You know, they'll leave you alone to do it because um, you're aligned. And so we work a lot harder now at getting work and once we got it, we mind it. You know, so it's not just about our excellence in design or whatever, it's about excellence in service and minding them. And I suppose a good thing that has come out over the last five years of challenge, let's say, is, is, is that lesson. And I thought that's worth sharing. Um, okay, so this is a house on Dartmouth Square. Um, this is one of the refurb projects we're gonna show, um, one or two, and um, yeah, it's a house on Dartmouth Square. It's a Victorian um, 1870s, uh, two over lower garden level um, Victorian house. And 
Um, basically, this one runs from Dartmouth Square to the Canal, um, and the, um, it hasn't done any muse development to the rear, so the canal's to the bottom, Dartmouth Square is to the top. Um, and the amazing thing about, like, the Victorians, Georgians were doing this years ago, so they, you know, decent ceiling heights and the important rooms. Um, and the amazing thing about this is the relationship across. So there's these really great ceiling heights and there's this dual aspect interconnecting um, reception rooms. And uh, Mary Donovan, the client here, basically wanted to mind her house. She loved her house, but she needed some extra stuff like um, bathrooms, <laughs> which these houses don't have, um, and a kitchen, a proper kitchen, and, and a utility. And uh, so we were extending to the rear. That was the brief. Um, and this is about how to extend to the rear and not screw up the house that's there. So the, on, the, on the left, you go, well, there's an extension to the rear. And if you map the windows, of the house, well, how, how do you know? So the, the middle one is about, well, if we form or carve the um, extension so it avoids those windows, uh, what happens? Um, and then if you pull them away enough so that they don't blinker the, um, the line of sight from those rooms or the bedrooms above, what happens? Um, and then the image on the right is about, you know, you've extended, but how do you, if you like, um, fix the damage you've done by extending. So that's what the top lit roof light um, third image is about. So this is the form of the extension then. It's really simple. It's, it's, it's um, a kitchen, a utility, a home office. Um, David, her husband, worked from home. Um, and the, it's a really nice garden, so you wanted to be there. And then um, the jacks. Um, so that's it. Kitchen, utility, office, and jacks. Um, and then it's the same materials as the previous house. Um, and these are the plans then, basically on the left. Um, it's an extrusion of that big room. So it's an extrusion of that, it's the kitchen. And the, an extrusion of the hall is the utility. And there's the, the office then, and then there's the jacks. Um, the top lit, the section where the, it's top lit. So each of these, each of these are top lit then. And yeah, so the kitchen is basically an extrusion of the the generosity of the bottom floor, um, and then the utility because it's off the half landings, coincidentally is an extrusion of that, and it's meaner, and that's okay. Um, and then the home office uh, is there, and the and the and the, the jacks is there. So they're an extrusion of the half landings. This is um, uh, another more recent one um, with Elizabeth, um, and it's a Vic it's an Edwardian actually, 1902 or 03 or something. And um, these houses are great again. Um, uh, fantastic kind of reception rooms, fantastic kind of first floor bedrooms, the bay window to the front. Um, nothing wrong with them at all, except the center of gravity of the house has kind of moved backwards. It's moved into the back garden. Um, and so, if you like, uh, the, with, with the kitchen or the, the center of gravity of the kitchen, if you like, now being totally different to 1902, um, the houses kind of don't work anymore because the kitchen in this was rubbish. Um, and so uh, it was Martina and Michael, and basically they wanted to kind of, okay, primarily to kind of create a kitchen that in engaged with the garden. Um, and if you like, that weakness in the house became a positive, or that was the brief in a way. Um, so these are the plans, and basically we, we leave all this alone and fix it up, um, and f you know, fix all that up. That's lovely. Um, and then we just make a really nice, well, a generous, I should say, um, kitchen and uh, eating space and a new bay window kind of um, do the opposite to that um, at the back and uh, and that's it except for upstairs to get a proper bathroom to serve these bedrooms we just came out to the side just a little um, we couldn't look at the neighbor but we could approach them um, and so that's the neighbor then or that's that piece to the side um, and then this I suppose is the extrusion of the um, house to the back um, Joe was slagging me earlier, saying um, the slide, I bet you the slide thing's going to break down. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, so these are the front elevation. Um, uh, yeah, beautiful houses. Um, and then the back, uh, and basically it's just about tweaking that little thing, which is making the kitchen work again. Um, so this, these are views of the kitchen. There's this clear story window, which kind of enables kind of light in, and it goes around a corner. And then that's the first floor bathroom. Okay, this is a project um, that we are lodging for planning permission tomorrow. <coughs> um, it's in Dawkey. Um, so Dawkey, you can probably make out, it's on the right hand side, top right there. And it's um, the train line kind of slashes through um, left to right. Um, and then Castle Street in Dawkey, which is kind of main street in Dawkey, um, continues through to become um, the Barnhill Road, which is the snaking um, road right through the middle of the slide, basically. Um, and we um, were delighted to be approached by a client who just bought at this site here at the knuckle or at the junction of the Dart Line, that and the Barnhill Road. And basically, they bought that site. And they want to um, build housing or, or an apartment scheme, basically, for basically later living. So um, basically it's people 60 plus retirement age um, and uh, they want to build beautiful apartments for later living, pre-care. Um, and the site, I just go, actually go back, the, um, this, uh, it's basically, it's, it's, it's a suburban 1960s, 1970s kind of suburban uh, Dublin really. Uh, these are single story pitched roof houses, big plots, um, turning into semi-detached kind of uh, two story houses and then back to single story houses kind of here. So we're surrounded by low density, low level um, 1960s, 1970s kind of housing. Um, and uh, the client wants to do high density housing, um, which you'll see in a minute. Um, and then uh, I suppose another feature was the trees and uh, there's these quite amazing trees. Essentially, it's the garden of uh, um, a lodge, um, a, you know, an old country period home. Um, and this would have been the original kind of, if you like, cartilage of the site. Um, so, so the garden has been sold off and this is the site. Um, and it slopes, it slopes pretty gently, but continuously so that it gets, um, that's the Barnhill Road. Uh, that's the old country house, which is not part of the site. And then this is um, basically it's called Dawkey Manor, and that's the profile of the site. And, and it slopes up um, ten meters from the entrance, basically to the kind of back of the two-story semi D's um, to the to the south. Um, and yeah, you can see the single-story pitched roof houses. Um, so so. Um, <laughs> Our plan is to build um, dual aspect apartments. And so we've got two north-south um, blocks uh, that, that basically enable dual aspect east-west apartments. And as the site slopes up, we slope up or we step up. So basically each block is broken into three blocks or three, if you like, smaller buildings. And then they become um, two apartments per core. So it's two per core for, per floor and they step up with the slope of the site. Um, and we keep the trees in as much as we can around the edge and we try and kind of scale to, to, to enable this jump in scale between um, you know the inevitable high density of this versus the low density of the perimeter um, and I suppose the yeah the key thing like it's so it's about light and opening up and getting generosity of light if you like east west um, and I suppose the kink in geometry is to kind of open up towards the site entrance and open up towards the sun to the um, to the south. Um, this is, the, uh, uh, I suppose, this is the mower in this project. It's about a kind of a central, the Jane Jacobs 
um, space, the stoop, the every kitchen overlooking this kind of communal garden um, as the social centre of the site. Um, and then that communal would be kind of um, served by kind of, um, they have a, they have, you can live on your own in the apartment and have be totally independent, or you can um, have, you can eat with your um, colleagues or you can eat with your neighbours in a kind of communal lounge um, and they have a kind of a gym and other sort of communal facilities as well. So, but the key thing for us was to kind of create this central community uh, garden at the centre of the scheme. Um, it's dorky and so when you get to a height or um, there's pretty amazing views again out towards the north towards Dublin Bay and that was a kind of a key driver in the site and you'll see more on that in and on. Um, uh, yeah, okay, so it's, it's housing for, you know, people that they would st stay in until, um, until they can't stay there anymore, so it's, it's particularly important that it is legible, that it is crystal clear where you need to go. Um, so if you're in a car, if you can still drive, um, you drive in um, underneath and there's, you know, six cores, it is super simple and you come straight up um, and you're into your apartment. Um, there's no corridors, there's no passages, it's, it needs to be as legible and as clear as possible. And that's kind of a good thing, you know, I think all schemes should be like that, but um, here it's an absolutely necessary. Um, and then if you're on foot, the blue is about, uh, you come in, you walk in and you come into your garden first um, and off, and every core, every stair is accessed off that garden. Um, so you feel an ownership every day, you have to pass by your garden, your communal garden. Um, and then you access the apartments directly off that. Um, the trees there, the site's unusual, or the, the client, I should say, is unusual in terms of they engage with the landscape architect immediately. It is nothing, you know, it's not a planning imposition. It's from the start, it's from the gen you know, it's from the beginning of the scheme. So it's all about creating this woodland um, or keeping this woodland feel of the site and then about creating this amazing garden in the middle. Um, in terms of the apartments, we, you know, we, we wanted to do open plan. So, um, so if you go open plan, well, you can go, you can point one way or you can point both ways. Um, and we were looking at, well, okay, well, what happens if you pointed both ways and kind of dislocated? So if you made a kind of a split so that somebody could be, you know, cooking on one side and, and in a still open plan arrangement, somebody else could be watching TV or somebody else could be on the phone or so that we made this kind of diagonal split of the open plan. Um, and that's what this slide's about then, um, where, where basically, um, yeah, I suppose the kitchen um, can talk to the living room without being in it um, and can talk then to, I suppose, the balcony and the view beyond to Dublin Bay. Um, and you have this diagonal open relationship that is not kind of all in one, just one room. Um, and then I suppose the, 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 the way that that works out then, so there, you know, there's the diagonal in green um, and the bedrooms diagonally opposite in red and the way you might move around the site and the storage provision. Oh yeah, another, another bit is um, the legibility. So, so say, okay, to get into your apartment it's fairly clear, but when you come out, um, it needs to be ultra clear again so you're not disorientated. So when you come out of your apartment, you immediately have a link to the outside. You immediately have a visual link to the outside and to the garden that is the centre of the communal space again. So, and you can choose to go down the lift or you can choose to go down the stairs, but you immediately know where you are. Um, so this is it then rolled out in terms of the diagonal. There's the diagonal relationship. Um, and I suppose that that works then in terms of the view. It works in terms of the, I suppose, the. Um, enablement of, of different uses um, at different times, or at the same time by the, by the user or their couple or their partner. Um, and then this is the, the, the you always know where you are slide, if you like, um, where, where um, you come out of your apartment and it's crystal clear where to go. And this is it back on site. And then these are um, CGI's of it being, um, yeah, I suppose as you approach from the entrance with the block on the right twisting to kind of say hello, to say come in. Um, and then this is it from the northeast corner um, where we show the stepping up the hill um, with the slope of the site. And through planning dialogue and all that, uh, 
the feedback was that we had to break the building down. You had to break it down into small little pieces because um, they don't like long buildings. So, um, uh, so basically, this is broken into six. Um, if, well, it's fragmented into kind of uh, three blocks, first of all, and then those blocks are broken um, into two further. Uh, so you get six articulations um, as you go up the hill. And then this is the kind of, com this is the, the garden is up here, this is the communal um, facility, and then the apartments above. And then this, I suppose, is uh, the space at the centre of the, um, the scheme where it's the, um, as the client says, it's the social glue, it's, it's, the, it's the communal garden, it's in this project, it's the kind of more, the search for more and things. So um, to finish, um, I think it's about, sorry, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, it's about, um, going back to the start, it's about uh, a storage box for clothes. Okay, you have to do the brief, fine. And then it's about what else can you do? Um, what more can you seek what, for the enjoyment of your client? Um, so it's about, um, in terms of the, the projects, it's about searching for more. In terms of your clients, it's getting to their heads in terms of what is they're really trying to do. And then in terms of one's team, it's about enabling them and enabling their potential. That's it. I just see um, I'm really early, but um, thank you very much.